Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to go deeper into our space, uh, into our study of covering spaces. In particular, we're going to talk about objects called the universal cover of a space. So after we analyze our universal cover, it's going to give us some structure on all of the coverings, all the connected coverings of a connected space X. In some sense, as we'll see as the class goes on, this mimics a setup in Galois theory, so this is sometimes called the Galois correspondence. So just so you know, we're in store for a bit of a technical class today. I'll try to illustrate with as many pictures as we can, but we're going to be building some very general object, and when you're building a very general object, you, you should expect the process to be a little abstract. So let's get to it. So remember that if I have a covering map P from X twiddle to X, then the induced map on fundamental groups is injective. So here's a natural question. Is every subgroup of pi one of X given by the induced map pi one of x one twiddle to pi one of x for some cover x twiddle. Well, here is a start. Is there a simply connected space? so that x twiddle, so that x twiddle covers x. This in particular means that the induced map is trivial. So it would be like realizing the trivial group. In some ways it seems like the, the easiest things to do because it's, it's the trivial group, but in some sense it's, it's the hardest case. So this is the hardest case. And other groups will follow from it. So it turns out that this is already a little bit too much to hope for in general. So we need some conditions. on X for it to have a simply connected cover space. In particular, uh, if U in X is an evenly covered neighborhood And gamma in U is a loop, then P inverse of gamma, well, this is a loop con completely contained in an evenly covered neighborhood, so it lifts to a loop, is a loop in P inverse of U. for some simply connected covering P from X twiddle to X. So since X twiddle is simply connected, P inverse of gamma contracts to a point. And if I if I compose this with 
the covering map P, I get a null homotopy of gamma in X. So if my space were to have a simply connected covering, then any loop contained in an evenly covered neighborhood needs to be, uh, well, there, there needs to be an evenly covered neighborhood that is contractible. So here, let me make this uh, definition formal. So a topological space X is semi-locally simply connected. That's a mouthful. So I will call this SL s c if every point x has a neighborhood u so that the inclusion map i from u into x induces the trivial map on fundamental groups. So I'm not asking for you to be simply connected here, but what I am asking for is that any loop contained inside of you is eventually null homotopic inside of X. So for example, All CW complexes are semi-locally simply connected. In fact, they are locally contractible. Every point has a contractible neighborhood. And so in, in particular, I don't even have to leave the neighborhood X to contract the loop. And most reasonable spaces will have this property. For example, uh, we mentioned manifolds a couple classes ago. They're also locally contractible. And most reasonable spaces are semi-locally simply connected. But let me give you an example of a space that is not. And this is sort of the, the easiest example. And you can see by how like contrived this example is that this is quite like pathological behavior. So this space is called the Hawaiian earring. And it's the subspace of R2 given by, I'll write it down in coordinates first, but then I'll draw it and the drawing will make more sense. So, so union as n goes from one to infinity of the points x, y, and R2 so that x minus 1 over n squared plus y squared is equal to 1 over n squared. So the way to read this is these are circles of radius 1 over n that are sort of shifted over to the right 1 over n in R2. So this looks like maybe a big circle first and then a smaller circle, and then a smaller circle. These should all be circles, and that's so ovular as I'm drawing them. And then a smaller circle, so on and so forth. And what's the problem here? Why is this not semi-locally simply connected? This has no uh, neighborhood, which includes into pi one of x trivially. Any neighborhood of this point is gonna contain infinitely many of those little circles that are uh, generators of this fundamental group. So here's a, a possible point of confusion. Just note that this is not the wedge 
as i goes from 1 to infinity of s1. It's not the infinite wedge of circles. That thing's a CW complex, and so every point has a contractible neighborhood. This is topologized using the subspace topology of R2, which makes those loops kind of cluster near the origin there. Okay. And let's just set our definition down. A covering space P from X twiddle to X is called a universal cover if X twiddle is simply connected. That means path connected and also has a trivial fundamental group. And this word universal cover means something. It means this cover is actually going to cover every other cover of my space as well, which is a very interesting property there too. And let me just also remind you before I write down the main theorem of today's class, a space is locally path connected which I'll write LPC if every point has a path connected neighborhood. Okay, and so here's the main theorem of today's class. Every path connected, locally path connected, semi locally simply connected topological space X has a universal covering space. So before we get into the, the theorem, the overall theme is that the universal covering space is the space of paths in your base space. So let's run with that. Okay, proof. So choose a base point X naught in X. And we define X twiddle as a set to be the set of homotopy classes of paths starting at x naught. Okay, so let me just write this down. X twiddle is as a set classes gamma, set gamma is a path in X with gamma of zero is equal to x naught. Now this is supposed to be a topological space, so let me define a topology on this. So what I'll do is I'll specify a basis. So let U be a set in X so that pi one, well, the, the inclusion map of U into X naught is trivial. Let me drop base points here. I think it will just model things. So this is trivial. Now suppose gamma is a loop 
which starts, or, or rather is a path, which starts at x naught and ends in u. Now let u gamma, this is going to be one of my basis sets. It's going to be the homotopy class of gamma uh, composed with nu, where nu is a path in u, so it's completely contained in u, uh, which starts at gamma of 1. So u gamma is it's a set of homotopy classes of paths. In other words, it's a set of points in this set x twiddle. The picture is this. Here's x. Here's gamma. This is one of my evenly covered neighborhoods. And then these will be all of the nearby points to this path. And that sort of makes sense. It's, it's the path gamma plus a little bit extra. And this little bit extra doesn't get into trouble. It doesn't wind around any fundamental group elements because U is one of these semi-locally simply connected sets. So I'm not going to spell out all the details, but you can check that this is a neighborhood basis. Uh, for x twiddle, it satisfies the union and intersection properties for a basis, and also we define a map P from x twiddle to x so that P of okay, this is a homotopy class of paths gamma, that's a point in x twiddle, where should I send this to? We'll send it to gamma of 1. Now, maybe you're worried because is gamma of 1 well defined? Yes, because a homotopy of paths keeps the endpoints fixed, so nothing to worry about there. And it turns out that the previously defined uh, topology makes P continuous. Okay, so uh, now we need to show that X twiddle is simply connected. Remember, this involves two things. First of all, I have to show it's path connected. And second of all, I need to show that it has uh, no fundamental group. So let gamma in x twiddle be a point. And now let gamma t. I'll define this in a second, be a path in X given by gamma T is equal to gamma on zero to T and gamma of T, it just stays stationary on T to one. So this is or not super interesting, it's just, it traces it out. So that's gamma, this is maybe like gamma one half, and then gamma three fourths, so 
the important thing to see here is that the end point sort of just keeps shifting farther and farther down as I open up T. So then the map F from I to X twiddle given by T goes to the homotopy class of paths gamma T is a path from gamma zero, which is just the class of paths which stays still at x naught. So remember, everything here starts at the point x naught, and at gamma zero, I just stay there the whole time, to gamma of one, which is gamma. And moreover, this lifts, uh, like well I guess that's all there is to it it's a path there so next we want that pi 1 of x twiddle with the base point the lift of the constant path at x naught is equal to zero. Now since P star is injective, we only need to show that P star of pi one of X twiddle is trivial. Okay, so now, also last time, we learned that uh, elements in the image of P star are those loops in X which lift to loops in X twiddle. All right, so now a loop gamma in X lifts to the loop T goes to gamma T. If you think about it, if you compose this with P, what does P do? P sends gamma T to the end point, which is gamma of t. And so at each point here between zero and one, if I lift this up and then come back down with p, I trace out exactly gamma. You should think about that. So uh, since this is a loop in x twiddle, I'm assuming that this is some non, possibly non-trivial element in X twiddle. So it should lift to a loop. Uh, that means gamma of one, the lift here, the starting point needs to be the ending point, but gamma zero is just the constant path again. So gamma one, which is gamma, is trivial. So that means any loop in X, which happened to lift to a loop in this covering space is trivial. And so P star, pi one of X twiddle, X not twiddle, is trivial, and so pi one of x twiddle, x not twiddle, is trivial. And finally, here's something I'll mostly wave my hands at.
is that X twiddle is a cover. And the idea here is to send the set U gamma to you. And it turns out P from U gamma to U is a homeomorphism. So the evenly covered neighborhoods are these semi-locally simply connected neighborhoods. Uh, so remember, uh, X twiddle is the space of paths. Here's a subset U. And what I'm gonna do is just send the endpoint of all these appended paths. So this is this black thing is a loop gamma, and here's U gamma. And under U gamma is a set U. And what I'll get is like the red, blue, green endpoints. And you can imagine every endpoint in U gamma, since it's uh, simply connected essentially, can be connected by a path here. And that's, that's the map. That's the covering map. Okay, great. So that's the end of that proof. There's obviously a lot of details missing there, but I encourage you to check any ones that you're curious about. So, uh, while this existence is great, it doesn't tell us how to, say, construct any particular example. So, how to get X twiddle in a useful form. That is, a lot of the spaces we are going to study in this class actually have very nice universal coverings. But if I presented them to you as the homotopy classes of paths in that space, it would be impossible to work with. You can't really see that. So, here are some uh, propositions that will help us. And I'm not going to prove these, but they're pretty easy. If P from X twiddle to X and Q from Y twiddle to Y are covering spaces, then so is the following three spaces and maps. P cross Q from X twiddle cross Y twiddle into X cross Y. So just to be clear, this takes X, Y and sends it to P of X, Q of Y. And so is the identity cross Q. That's going to take x twiddle cross y twiddle to x twiddle cross y. So here x y goes to x q of y. And finally, so is p cross the identity. So this is a cover of x twiddle cross y twiddle now over the space uh, x cross y twiddle. And the map is take x and y and send this to P of X and just Y. And here is another nice proposition. A composition of covering maps is a covering map. So the idea here is that I have uh, you know, space X, and then I'll have another space, let me call it X twiddle, and then I'll have another another space called X double twiddle, and I'll pick out an evenly covered neighborhood here, 
And this tells me that in X twiddle, I get some number of sets homeomorphically mapping onto there. And now the fact that X double twiddle is a covering map means maybe I could find some little sets inside of here so that X double twiddle maps homeomorphically onto there. And if I compose these with like this restricted neighborhood in X, then I get the cover I want. So here I have a three-fold cover and another three-fold cover, and this sort of multiplies into a nine-fold cover. So let me construct some examples of universal covers for you using these uh, past couple examples. So recall from the past, we learned that P from R to S1 is a covering map. So, since R is contractible, we actually get something stronger, which is that R is a universal cover. I'll start writing the universal cover. We'll get a sense in which it's the universal cover soon. Okay, so now let me use my uh, previous propositions. So P cross P from R cross R to S1 cross S1 is a universal cover. Uh, and let me just remind you, this is R2 and that is our torus. Moreover, P cross the identity is a universal cover of S1 cross R. So P cross the identity is going to go from R cross R into S1 cross R. And these fit in, in into a sequence of covers. So I'll draw the picture now. Uh, so here's S1 cross S1. It's the torus. And there's a covering map to here by S1 cross R. Remember our covering map before from R to S1, it basically cordoned everything off into integer multiples. So these are like uh, the R factor is equal to one. Here the R factor is equal to two. Here maybe the R factor is equal to zero. And a lift of a set here is gonna look like this. But now, so this is the uh, P cross the identity. And I also have this identity cross P which is going to take me from R2 down here and again now I'm going to cordon everything off into little integer multiples uh, so here maybe this green is the green from before but now I'm also separating everything into integer multiples vertically and those red sets now lift to things like this. Okay, there's going to be a lot of them. <laughs> I drew maybe too many, but speed run this. Go, 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 go. Okay. And so that's the picture of the covering map 
of R2 all the way down to T2. So that answers the question of a simply connected covering. Now, how about covers corresponding to other subgroups? It turns out all of those work out nicely too. So suppose X is path connected, locally path connected, and semi-locally simply connected, then for every subgroup H of the fundamental group of X, there exists a covering space let's call it XH with a map PH so that PH star of pi 1 of XH with some base point X not twiddle is equal to H for some base point. X not twiddle in XH. So every subgroup appears as the induced map. Okay, let's prove it. Again, I'll, I'll wave over some details here, but I'll hope to convey the idea. So I'm going to build this as a quotient of the universal cover. So let x twiddle be the universal cover of x. Then define an equivalence relation by, all right, so let me just make it clear, these are on points which is the homotopy class of gamma and the homotopy class of gamma prime in X twiddle by these two points are related if first of all gamma of 1 is equal to gamma prime of 1 and here's the important one the homotopy class of gamma uh, composed with gamma prime bar is in H. So as a loop, this is contained in H. Let me just remind you, this is a subgroup of the fundamental group. So it makes sense to have homotopy classes of loops in that subgroup. Great. Uh, so you should check that this is an equivalence relation. And to check this, you just mostly use that H is a subgroup. Now, if I have an equivalence relation, then I can form a quotient space. So let XH be equal to the universal cover modulo this relation. And let u in x be a semi-locally simply connected. We've shown that these are also evenly covered neighborhood. So recall that a neighborhood basis for x twiddle near gamma is given by u gamma. I'll just write down the definition again. This is the homotopy classes of paths. Gamma times nu 
where gamma of one is nu of zero and nu is completely within u. So note that if gamma of one is equal to gamma prime of one, then gamma is homotopic to gamma prime if and only if gamma times nu is homotopic to gamma prime dot nu. Since nu is in this uh, sort of boring neighborhood u, appending it on can't change the homotopy class is the idea there. Well, what does that mean? Then if the homotopy class of gamma is equal to the homotopy class of gamma prime, then so is all, so are all of these nearby points. That means the entire neighborhood u gamma is equal to the entire neighborhood u gamma prime, right? So let me just draw a little picture here. I'm trying to show you that I can use the same covering map, essentially. Uh, so here I am in X twiddle and X twiddle has like U gamma one, U gamma two, U gamma three, U gamma four. But maybe in this new space here, XH, these entire neighborhoods are going to be identified. But also these sets were the things that were evenly covering U. So here now is X. So that's the very rough justification that the map P from X twiddle to X given by the homotopy class of gamma goes to gamma of one descends to a well-defined map which is a covering map PH from XH to X. Now, recall again that the image of Pi one of XH X not twiddle under pH consists of loops in X which lift to loops in XH. Okay, so take X not twiddle this is now a point in XH, so it's a homotopy class of paths, an equivalence class of homotopy classes of paths, to be the class of the constant path at X naught. Now, if gamma in X lifts to a loop, in XH starting at this constant path X naught and ending at gamma 
Well, then this is a loop. Gamma somehow needs to be related to under this equivalence class of the constant path at x naught. So let me remind you, this is a path. Well, what that means is if these two things are related in the equivalence class, gamma, the definition of this equivalence relation is gamma times this path x naught. So again, this is a constant path. I'm sort of uh, being loose with notation here. This needs to be an H. Well, if you append the constant path onto something, you don't change the loop in any way. It's just a reparameterization. So that means that gamma is in H. So it all came down to how we defined this equivalence relation. Since we defined it as sort of identifying uh, paths that inverted to H, it must have been that loops in X that lifted to loops in XH or actually loops already in H. And that's the idea of it all. So let me give you an example of all this in action. So recall, uh, let me just call it P this time. From R2 to T2 is a universal cover. So let me give you an example of a subgroup here. If H is the subgroup, the identity cross Z in Z cross Z, the relation on R2, okay, so remember I, here is a R2, this is going to come down to T2. And I want to identify two paths if it comes down under the projection map to be a loop in H. So this identity cross Z here is generated by this. So this generates H. And the quotient that I want to make is to identify two points in R2 if they differ by an integer. These differ by an integer. And these points also differ by an integer. So I formed the quotient space of R2 given by uh, essentially look vertically. If you and the point differ by an integer, you're really the same point. And so this sort of factors down here into, well, first of all, it looks like an infinite strip. Any any point is related to some point within, say, this strip. So all points land here in the end. The idea is that this point is related to this point, and this point is related to this point. So you can hop down onto the strip. But of course, the top of the strip is related to the bottom of the strip. And so the covering space here corresponding that subgroup is exactly this cylinder we constructed before. And here, this loop lifts to that loop. So there's also a complementary direction to do all this. I'll just give a quick drawing of that. So also, uh, so which one did we do last time? Identity cross Z. If 
h is equal to z cross the identity, we get essentially the same picture. We get uh, r2 looking like this. And now what we do is divide things vertically. So now this point will be related to this point. And this point will be related to this point. And so this essentially quotients you to this vertical infinite cylinder. And you'll get a blue circle here. And this will project down to the other circle that generates the fundamental group of the torus. So that's sort of what it looks like in practice. So that's going to do it today. Uh, next time, we will address the question of uniqueness of covering spaces. So we'll introduce the notion of an isomorphism of covering spaces, and we'll learn about when two covering spaces are isomorphic. And it turns into this beautiful theory that really illuminates the subgroup structure of a group. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.